A multiband compressor has definable frequency ranges for each of its four compressors, and that allows you to determine what frequencies in which range you want to compress separately from the next adjacent band. So that control is the little dot that you find in between each of the makeup gain controls, and you can widen or narrow the frequency band simply by dragging that frequency control to the range of frequencies that you want it to occupy. So for example, the low mids now will work between 175 hertz and about 2 kilohertz or 2k, 2000 hertz. Or you could adjust the base frequency bandwidth to only be working from frequencies of 100 hertz and below. So this frequency scale going from left to right represents 20 cycles all the way up to 20 kilocycles or 20 to 20 kilohertz. That's the entire range of human hearing. But the bandwidth control allows you to define what frequency range each of the four compressors is compressing. Now let's talk about how to determine what frequency ranges you should be using on your multiband compressor. And they will change with every single project that you're working on. Because not every mix is going to have the exact same kind of instrumentation, so you may need to adjust these frequency bands. So let's go ahead and press play on our Cubase project again. And I'm going to solo the low-mid frequencies. Now if I narrow the bandwidth, I'm going to be lowering or narrowing what frequency range that particular compressor is going to be compressing. So for example, if I set it at about 150 hertz up to about 1.5 kilohertz, that gives me a frequency range where I can hear some of the percussion, some of the defining sounds of the bass, or the defining character of the bass, a little bit of the attack of the bass drum, and some of the low frequencies in the guitar. So now I can compress that frequency range separately from this frequency range. So let's go up to the high mid frequencies, and that has a lot of crispiness in it. And I can actually use the high frequency control to control some of that crispiness. So I'm going to narrow its bandwidth to take some of those really crispy notes out. I'm going to set that at about 5 kilohertz. Well, let's see, actually that's 8 kilohertz. Now let's deal with the low frequencies. And this might be a little bit tough to hear depending on what sort of uh, monitors you're using to watch this tutorial on. but that's all of the bass drum fundamental frequency and all of the bass guitar frequency. And then let's go to our very high frequencies. Now we've got all of the, uh, the very, very crispy parts of the hi-hats and the bell inside of that frequency range. So now we've split those frequencies up into definable areas that all of our instruments are working inside of. And that allows us to really curtail the compression for each of those frequency bandwidths appropriately for this particular master. So now let me show you why the multiband compressor is the most powerful mastering tool in your toolkit. I'm going to change the level of compression on the bass frequencies, and since those bass frequencies are working in their own frequency bands, the compression applied to the bass frequency range will not affect any of the other frequencies. So to make this a fair comparison, I'm going to drag the ratio control of each of those other bandwidths all the way up so that we've got a linear line on each one of those. So essentially all of these compressors are not going to be working. Or the other thing that you could do is hit the bypass button on those frequency ranges and now we can just worry about changing the compressor settings for the bass frequencies. So let's go ahead and press play on our project and let's start to really squash the bass frequencies. You can see that the gain reduction control on the bass frequency compressor is working a little bit right now, but let's get it working a little harder. Let's set the threshold to minus 25 dB. 
Now, every time the bass drum happens or the bass guitar has a strong attack, that compressor is going to be compressing the low frequencies. Let's set the ratio a little bit higher too. Let's set that to 4 to 1. You'll notice that some of those fundamental frequencies went away. Let me bypass it and show you what I mean. Now we can hear those low frequencies. Let me unbypass it. And you can hear that we're compressing those bass frequencies a lot. But because we're compressing them so hard, we're losing some of the volume of that band. So what I can do is take the makeup gain and bring it up. So now we have a really punchy low end that isn't affecting any of the other bands. Let me go ahead and turn off the bypass and you can hear that the bass range doesn't affect any of the other frequency ranges. But it makes it sound really punchy in the low end right now. Now let's quickly punch up some of the other frequencies. I'm going to leave the threshold set at minus 15 for most things, but let's change the ratio on some of these other frequency bands. I'm going to set the ratio to about 2.5 to 1. Those low mid frequencies are still a punchy frequency range, so let's punch them up a little bit. Let's turn the threshold down to about minus 20. Bring out some of the output of that frequency band. Let's go to the high mids. I'm going to solo those. Those don't need as much compression, but let's, let's leave it at minus 15 and bring the ratio up to about 2 to 1. Bring up the level a tiny bit. And then we'll go to the high frequencies. And the high frequencies don't have a lot of energy in them, but it is important to note that a lot of the harmonic overtones of the frequencies of lower pitched instruments are going to be in this high frequency band. So let's compress them just a little bit. I mean, they are pretty crispy, so maybe we just need to compress them, but not turn their overall output up very much. Let me bring the threshold down. Now you can see that those uh, hi-hats and anything else that's in that really crispy band are getting compressed a little bit harder now. So we've got some compressor settings set now. Now let's listen to the before and the after. I'm going to hit the bypass button on the multiband compressor. Now things still sound good with it off. But when it's on, you'll notice that it sounds smoother, and more importantly, it sounds punchier. Let's listen to it before and after again. Here's before. And now I'll switch it to after. Now we're going to learn about how to set the overall output of the multiband compressor.